Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to our latest vlog. That's right, it's a video vlog. So many of you commented last spring how much you enjoyed hearing a personal word from me that we're going to try to make this a regular part of our ministry. Of course, we'll continue to send out our regular text emails that you can get by going to jlouder.com, looking in the bottom corner of the screen where it says get email updates and receive them there. Don't forget, we're also on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're not a subscriber, you can also do that from our homepage. And I hope that you'll do that. An update I wanted to mention was how much we appreciated the many of you who prayed for us on our recent appearance on TBN's program, Praise the Lord. It was an exciting time of doing the show with the Oak Ridge Boys and Ronnie Millsap. As many of you have said that you were unable to watch the program and wondered if there was some alternate way for you to view it. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be uploading this to our website, and you can view it there. Or if you'd like to see it immediately, you can go to tbn.org, where it'll be posted for the next 25 to 30 days. Thank you so much for keeping us in your prayers. It's exciting times as we're seeing so many people come to Christ, and how great it's been to hear from people all over the country that are blessed by hearing the Word preached and someone telling the true gospel of Christ. Well, before I go today, I want to share with you a couple of things the Lord shared with me in my recent quiet time. Words uh, of encouragement and also words of conviction. I want to be honest and tell you that many times when I have my quiet time, it's a real struggle. Sometimes I pray and it seems like my prayers don't even get above the ceiling. Other times I read God's Word and no sooner than I close the cover that I cannot remember a word that was spoken. Well, it was a great a couple of nights ago because God really opened up my ears. It really spoke to me. And I heard some things that I really needed to hear. Some of which I don't know that I wanted to hear, but I needed to hear. The first thing the Lord really spoke to me about had to do with the story of Elizabeth and Mary. You remember the angel Gabriel came and spoke to Mary and told her that she was going to be having a son, that she was going to be having the Christ child, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. But he also notified her that her cousin Elizabeth, who lived in a different region, was also having a son. We know that she had a baby boy named John the Baptist, who was the forerunner. He was the announcer of Christ's ministry. But you know, one of the first things that Mary did was is she packed her bags and she went to go see her cousin Elizabeth. I thought about that. I thought about how important it is for us that when God has impregnated us with his vision or his goal, his plan or his purpose, that we go find some other person, some other godly person. Maybe it's a family member, maybe it's not. But someone who can share what God is doing in our life. Someone who can relate, someone who can understand, someone who's been through some of the same things that we've been through. I believe that not only did Mary receive encouragement from Elizabeth, but I also believe that Elizabeth received encouragement from Mary as well. Maybe right now it's not a time of vision. Maybe it's not a time of excitement. Maybe you're going through struggles and difficulties. Maybe your heart is hurting about some recent events that have transpired in your life. But you know, it's also a good time for you to find someone else, someone that will give you godly advice and godly counsel, someone that can be there for you to help pick you up spiritually, that can just love on you and encourage you. I'll tell you, the Lord spoke to me. And I know there have been times past where I have been able to reconnect with old friends that do some of the same things that I do, that have the same goals and same desires. And it's been a real source of inspiration. The other thing the Lord spoke to me about was this statement. I actually wrote it on the wall of my closet. And it said that the Lord is God, not only of the resurrection, but He's also God of the crucifixion. What does that mean? I sit there in my closet contemplating these words, and I began to ask myself a couple of the hard questions. First of all, what is it in my life that needs to be crucified? What in my life right now is alive that needs to be nailed to the cross, that needs to be killed, that needs to be dead? Maybe it's a, a, a certain habit for some of us. Maybe it's a, a, a certain relationship. I, I don't know what it could be, but the Lord began to show me things in my life that I have allowed to spring up, maybe like a weed that needs to be pulled, that needs to be put to death. But I also began to ask myself, what things in my life would God want to resurrect? What visions, what dreams, what things have I allowed to die that God intended me to be or that God intended me to do? I'll tell you what, I was not only encouraged by the, the, the story of, of Mary and her finding that resource to help her, but I was also convicted because I saw a lot of things in my life that have gotten out of place, that have gotten out of kilter. See, I believe the Lord is not only concerned with what we do, but why we do it. How often do we get so caught up in building our own kingdom and building our own life that we forget it, that it's not about this life 
And it's not about our kingdom. That God has put us where we are currently at so that we can be a maximum force to do good for Him, to show other people who He is. May God give all of us a greater burden and a greater vision to reach people that don't know Christ. You're watching this blog right now, and maybe you're a doctor or a lawyer. Maybe you're a blue collar or a white collar. It makes no difference. I want you to realize that God has placed you there so that you can use your position, you can use your influence to help other people who are in need, to inspire, to encourage, to challenge, and maybe even convict other people. Well, I hope you'll continue to pray for us. These are exciting times for us. In the next 12 weeks, we will be gone almost every single week. We'll be all the way as, as far east as North Carolina and as far west as New Mexico and all points in between doing one thing. We're not going to be out there promoting church and religion. We're going to be out there doing one main thing, and that's helping people understand that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We want to see people have a one-on-one, -on -one, face to face radical encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We so need your prayers. More than anything else, we need you to get behind this ministry and pray that God would anoint us, empower us, give us favor with the people, and that this fall we'll see thousands of people have their lives radically transformed by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I hope today's word has been an encouragement to you. We are so grateful to all the partners and friends of this ministry. Honestly, we couldn't do what we did without you. God bless you. Spend time in God's word. Seek his face. There is nothing greater than being in his presence. And be sure that you're always on the lookout for other people that are hurting, other people that need to hear about the Jesus Christ that changed your life. God bless you. We look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye.